Good morning and welcome to another watercolor live demo. Thanks for joining me. I hope you brought a friend with you. Um, we just had a whole bunch of snow here, so uh, kind of thinking winter. Actually, this, this particular reference that um, I'll be showing today, though, isn't from winter. It's actually the remnants of winter, I guess, or the remnants of ice in, um, in summertime. I was in Newfoundland several years ago, and um, this, this particular iceberg was in the bay at uh, Twilling Gate. So um, there had been a huge storm. Well, not really stormy, but it was pouring rain. And um, the sun came out and shone right on the iceberg. So it, it made for a, a great reference picture. So uh, with that, I'm just going to uh, jump right in here. <clears throat> if you are joining me, uh, make sure you mention where you're from. Good morning, Jan. Uh, let me see here. I just got to switch over here now to my reference. There we go. So, um, just to give you an idea of the scale of this thing, that little dot there, that's a bird. <laughs> so it's pretty big. Um, well, may, maybe if you've been up to the Arctic or something, maybe this wouldn't, you wouldn't consider this very big, but I thought it was pretty big. So, uh, but what I really, really liked about this is, and, and maybe it doesn't all translate quite as well on camera, but uh, what I loved about it was the um, beautiful colors in this. Oh my gosh, there's there's like a turquoise, and then there's kind of a pinky color, and then there's almost a green in here, and, and there's all these minerals that are in the iceberg that are just gorgeous. So I want to try to bring out some of those colors. I want to try and keep um, this, definitely this highlight, and you can see this this storm, it was just passing on um, as as we came upon this iceberg. And um, so the sky is just now starting to lighten up. It was like indigo at the time and it was quite impressive. Anyway, good morning. Hi, Melody, Anne, Catherine, Diane. Thank you so much for joining. Um, if, if you're not in the chat, good morning to you too. And uh, let's jump right in here. So, um, I was just clearing off my palette here. I'm obviously going to be using a bunch of blues and all of that, but first I'm going to have to get a drawing down here. Um, so, I am going to uh, estimate my horizon line here. There we go. And the left side of the iceberg is approximately here. Actually, I think I might make this just a little bit, it's, it's a little bit smack in the middle at the moment, so I'm not sure that I want to keep it that way. So I think I'm going to uh, maybe leave a little bit more space around this side of the, the iceberg. So if I make the left of it, left side of it here, and then the right side end maybe about here. Um, so that's, that's the, the area that I'm giving myself for that, for that uh, to, to draw that in. So it's about half above and half below the uh, horizon line there. So I want to make it sort of equidistance. And I'm looking for this angle. So put that in there. Oh, actually, that's not at the horizon, is it? It's got to go below. It's the horizon's back here, and then our iceberg's way down here. So I've drawn that wrong already, right off the bat. So there we go. Okay, so by using my uh, sort of tick marks there, the, the ones that I use to estimate the uh, the width and everything. I can fit this into the area that I need. So there we go. So I have a little extra space here in front of my iceberg. 
Um, let me just remove Ozzy here. Okay, so I don't know why people do that, but they do. And um, I'm just reading some of the comments here. Oh, the ice, yeah. Oh, I bet the ones in Alaska are amazing. I, I really haven't ventured too far. This was probably the, you know, among the only icebergs that I had ever seen, which was in uh, Newfoundland. But uh, uh, but there were several while we were there. Um, this was in actually July, which is a little late for some of the icebergs in Newfoundland. And uh, so... Uh, it, um, sorry, I got distracted there. Um, the, uh, the icebergs in Newfoundland were amazing. Anyway, I thought they were, they were beautiful. So, uh, anyway, I am going to draw this in. I am using a mechanical pencil. I saw your question there. So, um, No, I will, it will not dissolve with the watercolor. I am going to be using a kneaded eraser, which I keep in a little container like this. And so I use a kneaded eraser just to erase any of my working lines that I have done, so I won't see all of that stuff. Um, I'm, I am drawing lightly though, and I hope some of this is showing up on the screen for you guys, because I know that um, I, I do need to draw it fairly lightly in order for this to uh, to work properly. Now, I, I want to point out something because one thing I'm noticing here, do you see that this image here is longer than it is high, okay? Definitely longer than it is high. If you look at my paper, it's pretty close to square, right? So I have to keep that in mind that I'm going to need more space or I'm going to have either I'm either going to have to add more to my picture, or I'm going to have to crop it down. So I think I'm going to add more to my picture. Um, I want to try to keep this as much as possible to an eight by ten format. But it's really something to consider when you are um, trying to take a reference picture and apply it to your watercolor. Keep in mind that it does need to be similar in proportion. So if it's longer than it is high, like say it's twice as long as it is high, then you can't put it in a square and put fit everything in. It won't work. So um, we need to um, adjust for that. So you either add more to your photo or you crop your um, crop down your watercolor. So it needs to be the same proportion. Um, there is a way to work this out, by the way, and I'm going to explain this, and some of you, it'll go over your some of your heads <laughs> because I know it always confuses people. But this corner here, if I line my photo right up here with my tape, okay, and right along here too, okay, and I take a ruler, let me grab one here quickly. And I take a ruler from this corner to this corner. That tells me that the top of my my uh, uh, painting, if I want to do it the same proportions, should end about there, right? So I should crop that much off my paper if I want to keep it the same proportion. But since I'm not cropping my paper, I'm going to have to add to it. Uh, that's that's how you keep it on the same proportion. It's that corner to corner thing, diagonally. Um, nice to see everybody. Um, yeah, so there are there are several. This one's actually a, a nice bird that was breaking down. So it actually has several components to it. Um, you know, it's breaking up. Some of them have, have turned over. Um, actually, this one has turned over. Uh, we actually got to watch it turn over, which was really cool. Um, that was uh, quite exciting. Okay, so this is below the horizon line. That's my horizon line right there, so I've got to draw this a little lower.
And clearly, it does not need to be a carbon copy of my photo. I just want to get the, the essence of this. But I am going to try to keep the proportions pretty close. All right, so this starts really close. If I'm looking at this space here, they start really close together here. It swoops down and it comes to right about here. So I've got to swoop down. And there's quite a few little um, little lines, sort of diagonal lines there, but uh, I'm just going to do a couple of them. I'm, I don't want to overdraw this. If I overdraw it, then I will end up getting too tight with my drawing, with my painting process, I should say. So I'm going to erase some of my working lines and add in some of the important um, sections within the icebergs now. So uh, I'm just going to come along here. I'm going to try and keep this fairly quick, but um, there's kind of a diagonal line here. There's a scoopy thing there. <laughs> There's. So basically what I'm putting in right now <clears throat> is a structure, structure for my, um, for my iceberg because it has different planes to it. Um, you know, it has these little ledges and, and all kinds of things. So I'm going to bring this down a little bit more. So I'm adjusting my drawing because I want to I want to keep this one pretty focal and I want to get things in pretty good proportion. So Okay, so that's a little better. And Get my horizon back in there and I'm just going to put in a little bit of this land that's in the background. Now I don't have I don't have this iceberg tall enough that's what's wrong. So we're gonna we're gonna make this guy a little bit taller and so it's, it's worth it to take a little time get the drawing right. There we go that's more like it. And a, this land is much further away, so I want I want to um, make that smaller. All right, so there's there's going to be some ridge of cloud there, but and I have kind of squished up my my iceberg a little bit, but I'm not going to take the time to to correct that because we're live. Um, oh, good morning. Yeah, we sure did get a lot of snow. Um, probably the biggest single day dumping we've had in probably a couple of years. Um, it was it was a lot. It was deep, but thankfully it wasn't heavy snow. So now where do we start here? I always take a look at my photo and start thinking, okay, how am I going to build this? And so I'm mentally painting it before I actually pick up my brush. So I'm thinking I would like to get this background in before I start working on the iceberg itself. So I'm looking at sort of a blue gray here, kind of a little bit of, um, almost a denim blue. It's it's quite quite dark. And so it's um, this background it's they're both blue, but definitely different blues. This is a this is a warmer blue. It's a little more leans a little bit more towards a purple gray. And so I'm going to do that. Now, I can paint right through this land mass because it's darker. So I can just add that on top. Um 
Yeah, so I'm going to paint around the iceberg for now, and then I will come back and paint the iceberg separately. And when I do, I'm going to be leaving some of this. I'm not going to use masking or anything like that, so I'm just going to paint um, around my, white, my light areas. Now I'm going to be using a number 10 squirrel hair brush. Oh, wait a minute. Let me go use something bigger. I'm going to use... Um, this one's a four, so the sizing makes absolutely no sense, but it's about the size of my thumb. It's pretty big. And I'm going to mix up, and I think I would like this almost a little bit granulating, this stormy sky. usually don't like granulating color, but I'm going to use a bit of French ultramarine blue. Uh, my paints are Da Vinci at the moment. Okay, it's French ultramarine blue. Now that's obviously too clean and pure blue. I need something a lot more gray. So I'm going to mix a little Payne's gray into that. Now the problem with Payne's gray is it's almost a greenish blue. So we need to warm this up a little. So I'm going to take a little bit of I'm going to take a little bit of permanent rose and add that in. Okay, so I've got French ultramarine blue, a little Payne's gray, and some um, permanent rose. It's giving me a nice indigo color. I can always test out my color on scrap paper to see if I have something that's about right, and I think that's pretty good. And I think I think I would like to work on I'm going to work on dry but I'm going to get a little bit more <clears throat> uh, permanent rose off here to the side oops I went into the wrong one permanent rose and I'm going to be using a combination of those, maybe even a little raw sienna. So I'm going to put a little bit more color into this sky because there's actually some light areas here, which you know you can see a little bit of warmth in those. So that's where the where that's where these two warm colors are going to come into it. This is this is on the cool side, and then we're going to introduce some warms. So I'm going to come across here with a little bit of this um, raw sienna. Now raw sienna, you can see my brush isn't that clean, so I don't have the cleanest color, but that's fine because I'm not really aiming for a clean color anyway. So straight into my blues while this is wet, and I'm working like crazy because I want to have um, the I want to have this blend, and if I don't work quickly, it won't blend. So, and I'm going to come in. This gets really quite, quite indigo here, and I won't even need to stop where the water is because the um, What color of the water is pretty much the same as the sky. But I'm cutting in around the iceberg. I want to make sure I don't come in with a brush that's too wet there, or I'll make blossoms. Might have anyway. <laughs> right through all of this. Splashed a bit on my iceberg, blot that off. And so this, the key here, when you're working on something, when you're working on a dry surface, your brush needs to be wet. Oh, 
always working horizontally because both the, the sky, the clouds, and the water are horizontal format, so I don't want to be having brush marks that go up and down. Okay, so that's a real fast, quick and dirty background. My blue colors are French Ultramarine Blue, bit of Payne's Gray, and a touch of um, Permanent Rose to make this warmer. First I made it a blue, a blue gray, and then I warmed it up with a little bit of Permanent Rose. Then I made a puddle of Permanent Rose and another puddle of Raw Sienna, and that's what I used. Okay, so I'm going to wipe off these edges. Because you can get to these colors with any number of paint combinations. Don't feel that, you know, if I tell you a combination, don't think that that's the only way that you can achieve it. You can definitely um, mix to, to get other colors in there. Uh, or to get a similar result, you can use other colors as well. All right, so I've got a little bit of blossoming happening here, but um, I'm going to leave that for now. And I'm going to start thinking about my... I'm going to re-wet this, I think, and build this up a little bit more. I, I'm feeling like by the time I get my iceberg on there, it's not going to be dark enough um, to really make the iceberg look like it's really got that beautiful lighting. So I want to get this a little bit more dark. And, um, you know, you can see I'm... I'm still a little bit lighter than my reference picture and so I want to get it a little bit more dramatic and that's kind of what I'm going for here is that drama of that beautiful lighting. So my board's a little bit wonky here. I'm going to see if I can prop something underneath it. Put this underneath. There we go. Then it won't wobble so much. All right, so I'm going to go back up to the top. And I'm just going to wet and drop in some more color here. I want to keep some of those lights the way they are. And I'm going to put those little dips in the cloud. Right, so I get that little bit of that ridge of the cloud there. And I'm going to go with clean water again. Let's get this brush clean. And I'm going to go under here with clean water and then I'm going to bring some more of this color. Let's Get a little more mixed up. Let's see if I got it, got the mixture about the same. Pretty close. All right, so. I'm going to come under here with a little more and I'm cutting in around my iceberg because I really want to get that um, shape established. And I'm just going to come to the horizon line. So I'm just going to come right here.
I'm going to work both sides at the same time because if one dries, then I'll have a weird line in my sky. that straight across there. Okay. I'm going to come into my warms, try to get a little bit more across here, just really help this to blend a little bit more. Brushing off, I'm wiping my brush off so that it doesn't get a, um, so I don't create blossoms. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone. Wipe up my edges again. And I'm going to use some of that same blue in the water, but this time I'm, I want to work on dry paper and I'm going to do a bit of dry brushing. So I'm going to thin it down a little bit because I don't want it too dramatic in the water, but I do want to have the feeling of the water. So I'm going to use the side, the belly side of my um, brush here and really get the hand like almost parallel to the paper. And I'm going to go in a straight line here and drag my brush across. And in doing so, I will get some of these broken lines, which will give me the feeling of water. So it's the side of my brush I'm using, not the point. brush is really quite dried and so it's giving me these um, all this these broken edges which I love okay so I think it's time to leave this alone to dry actually I can get my dryer and do that one second So I'm going to mute myself for a second so that uh, you won't hear, have to listen to my dryer, but I'm going to dry this. Okay, so it, it feels flat now, and I think I can just start coming in with my um, colors for my iceberg. So I'm going to get rid of uh, maybe my yellow here. I'm 
get a cleaner, cleaner colors here for some of this. And those do need to keep in mind how clean your color is if you're, you know, depending on what you're working on, but uh, sometimes you really need to make sure that your, your colors are clean especially if you're trying to create the illusion of light um, you you're gonna whenever there's light source um, your colors will be cleaner so um, this brush is gonna have to get washed but I'm gonna use a new brush now I'm gonna go to a number 10 um, this is about the size of my pinky well smaller than that actually so it's not that large but um I'm going to look at some of the colors that I could be using here. So I'm going to take advantage and use, because I love this color, and I hardly ever get to use it. It's cobalt turquoise. So cobalt turquoise, maybe not the most transparent color, but I'll be thinning it down quite a lot. So I love this color. I love cerulean blue. I'll be using maybe some of that. And the idea here is I really want to use a combination of blues. I don't want just one static blue color for my iceberg, which is, you know, the temptation, right? Um, I haven't quite decided about this bird, whether I should leave it in there. I don't think it's kind of right smack in the middle, and I wouldn't put it there if I was adding it in. But I may add, I may add in the sky over here a bird. But I didn't allow for it, so I may have to use a little white paint to put the highlight on the bird. You can see another one right here, that little speck. Uh, that's actually a bird. <laughs> and um, I think they like it when the iceberg flips over and probably stirs up a lot of the fish, I guess. That's my guess. I don't know, but... All right, so we've got some blues here. I've got... I'm going to use maybe some cobalt because I don't want a lot of granulation in my um, iceberg. My, my cobalt, by the way... Um, isn't that granulating? This is uh, Da Vinci. I you know some some brands are very granulating, and and mine's not too bad. So just just as a heads up there, and I want to use a little bit of my permanent rose as well. So I've got this this whole combination from very um, cool blue to a warmer blue to a pink. So I'm going to start. working here and I want to leave these lights. These lights are going to be extremely important. So I want to come in here and maintain that and I hadn't erased too much of my pencil lines but in the end um, the pencil lines are really not going to be too noticeable. I, For one I, I'm not too bothered by pencil lines. I think it kind of is like the trademark of a handmade um, painting. You know, the fact that it's the original, you can see the pencil lines. And I may be able to move um, to uh, erase some of them anyway. But I'm just going to start with some very light colors here. And I definitely see kind of a turquoisey kind of color here. And then it starts coming down into some blues. So I'm going to switch over to cobalt blue. I'm going to treat this one sort of one ridge at a time, I think, just to make life a little simpler. The uh, iceberg does have several elements to it, like several sections to it, so I don't have to... Um, I don't have to do every single bit of it all at once, even just because it's all one big iceberg. I don't have to do every part of it at the same time. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to come down to the next iceberg and do the same sort of thing. I'm going to start with this beautiful cobalt, cobalt turquoise. And now keeping my paint fairly diluted because 
In order to portray the transparency of the iceberg, I need to have transparent color. I have opaque color there. It's very difficult to um, give the same message. I'm going to use some cobalt here. Come in along this edge. Now here's where I really need to clean up this edge here. Get that really well established. And I want to keep this also fairly transparent. There's no white edge right along this top part here. Probably because it's in a bit of shadow. So I'm paying attention to those types of things, like where the where it makes sense to have shadow and where it doesn't. And I need to work quickly here if I'm going to get these connected without uh, creating blossoms or hard edges. I'm letting the colors sort of mix and mingle. And this is kind of the, definitely the ugly stage of the painting. You've all heard of the ugly stage and you've experienced it too, no doubt. But um, you have to trust that, you know, things are going to change as we paint. All right, so, all right, so I've got that. And now I do have to leave a white edge on this, so I actually can work in this, this iceberg here. So again, I want to keep my colors pretty transparent. And Quite a few of these ridges here. Then to the cobalt. And I'm working a little bit more on the tip of my brush because I want to get these points you know, that little peak there, for example. I want that to taper off. Too much in my brush. Pull some of that up, blot it off. And I'm always looking at the diagonal shape and I'm not too concerned about making it precise. I'm trying to capture the essence of the iceberg. I don't have to make it an identical copy. There we go. So you can already feel the sense of the, the light on that one. Uh, <clears throat> now I'm going to soften an edge here because this part, I mean, sometimes you have very ridge, hard ridges on this, and other times it's a little bit more rounded. So I'm going to take a blotted brush, clean and blotted. Let's make sure it's clean. <laughs> and I'm blotting it. And I'm going to just soften this edge a little bit. So I'm laying the brush above it. And I'm going to tickle that edge till it softens a bit. And I might do the same on uh, one or two of these as well. <clears throat> because I'm creating a volume here in, in my iceberg. And the volume can be either like a right angle, like, you know, where it's cut off, looks like somebody took a knife and cut it, or it could look rounded, like it's melted or, or um, molded uh, in that shape. So I need to pay attention to that sort of thing. So I'm gonna come into, um, that's dry enough, I think. 
I'm going to come into this area here now and start bringing in some of that color. Now there's not too much of the um, cobalt or the turquoise in there, but I'm going to come in here and need to keep those whites at the top. Those are very precious to keep those. That's going to tell our story. Keeping this really light in here, there is a little bit of a little bit of turquoisey color in here, and you notice I'm really just focusing on those big shapes right now. I'm really not getting into any of the uh, really uh, small sections. I'm just focusing on these big sections first. And as I paint this part of the iceberg, I have to pay attention to the shape of the iceberg below because that's what I have to paint around. So it's starting to get a little bit more turquoisey over here. So I'm going to bring in a little bit more turquoise into this combination as I continue to paint. I'm trying not to make this too um, smooth along the top of the iceberg. It's actually a little bit bumpy. So, I know Alaska has some beautiful icebergs. Have any of you actually seen one? I remember people saying to me, oh, go to Newfoundland, you'll see, you'll see icebergs. And I'm like, yeah, so it's a big chunk of ice. What the, what's the big deal? And then when you saw it, it's like when you see the sheer size of it and the colors and the, which really don't, get captured very well with the camera. So I'm going to do a little bit of embellishing, I guess, with my brush and my paints because I want to capture what I felt when I was there, not what the camera captured. So that's what I want to paint, is what I felt. Right, so, so far I haven't really brought any of the pinks into it, but I'm going to get there on a second pass. Ooh. Nice, see how you feel the, the, um, the clearness of that water, that the, you know, the fact that it's sort of translucent? All right. So there's a little ridge under here. I'm going to get a little bit of that in there. Probably had my brush too wet. Wet this whole section again. Maybe I will bring a little pink into this. Just, just a whisper. I don't want to do too much. I don't want it to look technicolor. But I just want to hint at it. And see if I just pick up just the tiniest bit on my brush and how that alters that uh, that color there I 
Okay, so the darkness of this background is really popping out that shine or that light that is hitting the iceberg. Um, but I'm not really getting the sense of the um, foliage or anything yet, so I'm going to take this, this color that I used for my sky. I'm going to green it up a little bit with some... Uh, I'm going to use some raw sienna because I don't want it really bright green or anything like that. I just want it kind of a dull green. So I'm going to put in a little French ultramarine blue, a little bit of raw sienna, and you can see it's making just a very kind of dirty green color. And for my distant land mass here, I'm just going to come in and just paint in the basic shape. What I really want to try and do is get get a straighter line on my water. It really should be a straight line. There we go. And normally to create distance, um, we're, we would be thinning down and diluting colors that are in the background uh, because the you know we want to create the illusion of of distance now the camera has captured it I see you know I see about the same value but in a painting if I want to create that feeling of distance I want to make this lighter because I don't have every detail that the camera has captured to portray what I want to do. So I'm going to create perspective on purpose here with a little bit more diluted color. All right, so that feels further away just because I've done it lighter. So with this one here on the left, when this is dry, I'm going to come in and I'm actually going to hint at a little bit of, um, you know, texture on that island. These ones won't get any because they're too far away, but but this one is going to have a little bit. This this island here, the sun, this was really quite miraculous because when the storm passed, the sun shone on the iceberg, like just like a beacon, <laughs> just like a spotlight. So um, it really popped it out. Okay, so um, I'm just going to move my mouse over a bit. I, my mouse is always covered in paint. <laughs> I'll move it over here maybe. So, uh, all right. So keeping these, these very transparent, I can start building up the shadows on the iceberg now. So the shadows are going to have a little less transparency, although they're not going to be as opaque as, say, that island. I also want to incorporate a little bit of, of the coloring of the iceberg into the water itself. Now, water that's in motion like this isn't that reflective but look at here you see a little bit of highlight and that's that's from this this bright spot here um, you know you get some bright spots down here and so on but um, I, I want to take some of this color for example and bring it into the water where the shadows are and I'm going to leave a few areas Get a little more than that. I'll leave a few areas where I can um, show the reflected light.
Um, okay, so I'm going to start now. Just uh, again, very transparent color here because don't need to have really opaque color in order to create um, textures here. A squirrel emergency. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so um, in order to create some of these ridges, I'm going to use transparent color and I'm going to build up several layers and I'm just going to build slowly as I create and carve out this uh, the shapes in this um, in this uh, iceberg. Um, Jen, you were asking about the colors for the islands. The I just used my my color combination that I had for my sky and I added some I made it a little darker and I added a little bit of raw sienna to it um, to make it a little bit sort of gray green and uh, but any anything you mix up to make a gray green would do so I'm going to now paint be painting on dry here I'm using mostly cobalt And I'm going to start to create some of these sort of ridges that I see in the ice. Here's kind of a big ridge right here. That's a very prominent ridge right here. And it it has a hard line, but only on one side. So I want to soften this. So I rinse and blot my brush. I'm going to soften this edge. All right. So that gives you that feeling that it's got kind of a ledge to it. It's a little greenish, so I'm going to put a little bit of that cobalt turquoise in there too. The cobalt and the like, the cobalt and the turquoise together is so beautiful for icebergs. All right, so I'm going to use a little more cobalt and cerulean too. Cerulean's kind of the one in between. That's a beautiful one to incorporate as well. But now I'm going to start carving out some details here. Um, there's kind of a dark area in the middle of this iceberg. I'm really getting up on the tiptoe of my brush for some of this, not all of it, but some of it. This whole area over here gets a little bit darker. This is definitely the shadow side of the berg. And I'm leaving a couple of little lighter areas in there as well. So you can start to see a little bit more form happening in the, in the iceberg. Now this one I think I need to get a little bit darker and I'm going to put a little bit of a little bit of permanent rose into it as well. And right here, oops, maybe that's too dark. And again, I can leave a little bit of a lighter ridge along the top of that iceberg because although it doesn't have the sun directly on it, it does have a light edge. Okay. 
Okay, and we've got that, that scoop type of shape here. So I want to come down this portion and underneath. There's a number of little ridges. Now my paint, I'm, I'm, as I get into the lighter areas, I need to thin down my paint. I can't, I can't do all this sculpture on this uh, iceberg in the same value. I have to change it up. There's definitely going to be some darker areas and some lighter areas. So as I get into the light areas, I can't use the same, the same value. It has to be a little bit of a different change there. <clears throat> just want to get that a little bit darker. And the top of this iceberg, okay, so this one's right off to the side, and it is. Uh, very light compared to the others, right? Because it really has the sun on it because of the angle um, the angle at which you know the iceberg is shaped, this portion of it anyway. So this actually needs a little bit of color in it. So it's a little bit pinky. So I'm going to use cobalt and permanent rose here, cobalt permanent rose, and make kind of a purple. Really dilute it though, because I, I still want it to look quite white. So really, really watered down. Okay, so you see that. And, and I don't want to cover up all my white. I just want to hit that that different plane on the iceberg. So this is this top of the iceberg has a little bit of a different plane. So it's it's catching a little bit of the warmth as it isn't directly at the sun. So these ridges here, these are facing directly towards the sun, which is coming in this direction. This one isn't facing it directly, so it has a little bit of little bit of a uh, different value. So you can see you can see the light emerging from this. So we're going from that really horrible ugly stage to now something that is um, starting to create some form. All right so I'm going to come in with a little bit more shading and just keep sort of adding and building on what I've already established. So I'm work, working large to small, definitely large to small. So the, I can break it down into smaller, um, smaller and smaller segments as I go along. And I'm just going to slowly chip away at this and develop a little bit more texture. I can always blot with my paper towel if it's, it looks like it's more than I need. But these are thin layers that I'm putting on here so that I can create the subtleties that white on white presents, right? Because essentially that's what we're looking at here is, is white on white, or at least some subtleties of white and white. It's not obviously not white because I've got a lot of blue in here, but And I have a lot of glare, so I have to kind of lean over to one side to see what I'm doing. I 
I think I'm going to make it a little darker right here. And I'm going to soften that edge because I sure don't want to leave that like that. Okay, so I'm going to come back into my sky color here. And I want to establish some of these darks that are along the bottom edge where the iceberg is actually touching the water. Okay, so you can see where we're going with this. And this is sort of like getting over the hump, the, the ugly stage. <laughs> oh, you literally did have... <laughs> okay, so for those of you that can't see the chat, Isabel's saying that she had a squirrel <laughs> that got his tail tangled in the bird feeder and she had to go shovel some snow to permit the Humane Society to access the backyard. <laughs> oh, oh no, he probably heard, heard you and left without his tail. Oh dear. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> well, that is literally a squirrel emergency. Yes. <laughs> Oh, love it. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to keep coming in and um, carving out a little bit more. Um, I, I can't work on th things when they're sort of partially dry and partially wet though. So I think I'm just going to take a second here and use a dryer. There we go. All right, so I'm feeling like these icebergs are sitting on pavement, right? They don't look like they're integrated into the water. So I really want to create that. And they feel a little bit like pavement because of the, you know, the shadow underneath and so on. But I want to incorporate some of the shadows of, or the colors of the iceberg into the water. So I'm using again a dry brush and I want to incorporate some of this in into my reflections in the water. My brush is pretty dry I'm using my smaller brush here for this dry brushing this time Cobalt. Really keeping this quite dry looking. Though I really want to keep the shape this shape right here intact. You can see the dry brushing really gives that watery feel. 
and I'm going to come into my sky color because the sky color is actually reflecting in the water as well and I'm going to do a little bit more of that dry brush here it's kind of in bands I work carefully around the iceberg, of course. And you can see that the more uh, dark I add into my painting, the more the iceberg sparkles. So trying to get the, the texture of the water in there. I dried my iceberg so I can come back in and, and continue doing a little bit of building there. And Sometimes I need to soften an edge, so I'm going to come along and soften that. But I don't have to go crazy softening edges, that's for sure. Okay. So I want to build up some of these darks in the middle here. And some of these darks in the middle of the iceberg here, for example, pretty close to the to this uh, va same value as this the uh, clouds so I want to get some real darks in some of this Missed my line there. <laughs> now that doesn't mean that when I said um, some of them are the same value, I'm building up to it. I'm not just mixing a whole bunch of dark on my palette and slapping it on there. Um, I'm building up to it um, and remembering that I'm not painting on white this time, I'm painting on other colors, so I don't need to have uh, a whole ton of paint on my brush to create this effect. And and I think I don't need to do a whole lot more to this, but you know, I could play with it and fuss a little. But I think we're getting pretty close here. So really, the only whites of the paper um, are the highlights on the on the icebergs themselves, and um, 
not really loving, you know, how my sky w turned out here. This part to me looks a little bit too light. So I might come in and try a little bit more with my sky here. I'm going to just gonna wet this. And I'm going to glaze in some color. So I'm going to wet the sky. It's dry, so I don't have to worry about messing up what I've already painted on there. If you were painting this, um, you could easily uh, mask off your iceberg to do your sky. That would be a very simple solution. I just didn't want to take the time to do something like that in my demo. So waiting for ma masking does take a lot longer to dry than um, paint. So I'm just going to mix up some of that some of that sky color again. Bring it in here. I'm going to go right through that right through that uh, island at the back. Taking care to shape the iceberg nicely. Okay, so a little bit more raw sienna into this. tone down some of this so it doesn't have the same doesn't draw the same attention that the uh, iceberg does all right so liken that better I think wipe off these edges um, okay so we wipe that off a bit of a ridge here which I don't like so I'm going to just come in and lift a little bit of this excess color right here which if I had masked this first I wouldn't have that but there we go a little better Maybe, <laughs> maybe not. All right, so a little bit more color in my upper part of the sky as well. There we go. And good enough. Oh, <laughs> so Isabel for those of you that don't see the comments, Isabel says, the Humane Society came and detangled the tail. They said he was able to chew all the hair off and he will only have a bare tail. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, adventures. All right, so um, I think I'm going to dry this. 
Um, I, I may end up lifting a little bit more there, but I'm going to dry this first because if I continue working in this, um, the uh, I will just make it patchy. So if I want to lighten something there, I can dry this and then I can come back and lift. So I'm going to mute. Okay, sorry about that. Nothing worse than waiting for paint to dry, right? <laughs> um, I'm going to come into my land color here now, and I want to come in to add a few extra subtle, just like we did on the iceberg here, but I want to create the sort of the directional shadows on this land mass back here. So there's a bunch of... Uh, sort of diagonal lines leading in towards the iceberg, which is good. You want lead-in lines. And the first color, although it looked very flat, now it looks like it actually has a little bit of texture, a little bit of um, volume to it. So so sort of the same as our iceberg, you know, we started off with something pretty flat looking and then we start carving into it with some darks. And um, do I want a bird? Let's, let's throw a bird in here. I'll show you how I would do a bird. These birds are really small. Um, I'm going to do I don't want the bird to be the focal point, but I want it, it, it does give scale, so I'm going to put a little bird right here, right, a little bird right there, and if I want, I mean, if, if this bird is close to the iceberg, which it is, I want to have a little highlight on it, so I'm going to take a little white. This is uh, Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White, I don't have the label anymore. Um, but just a little highlight on the bird. That's it. And that is, will I do another bird? Let's do another bird right, right here. Just do it with white. There we go. Two two little birds, and uh, we'll keep it at that. So that's at least the essentials of uh, my iceberg construction. Definitely could come in and you know continue building up stuff like this. You know, you're gonna you're gonna look at it, and you'll you'll find more and more and more that you could add, and I think that's fairly typical. Um, but I like to add in subtle layers, not um, you know, not one big uh, application of color, but building slowly, and. Uh, Yeah, 
So I, I think that's just about got it. Like I said, I can always keep finding stuff, uh, darkening as I stand back from it and see how things dry and see if things need a little more of this or a little more of that. But uh, building it slowly enables me to sort of step back and see it a little bit better, I think, with, uh, let's see how it all works together. We tend, when we're painting, we just tend to work on something and we look at it so close that kind of we're, we're kind of hyper-focused on that one little thing, whatever it is, that we're working on. And we don't see how it's working together as a whole picture. That's why it's good to walk away and come back and see it with fresh eyes. Or step across the room where, you, you know, you lose all the detail. You know that, right? Some people say that looking in a mirror, uh, looking at your painting through a mirror is helpful as well. And, and really what it does is it just changes the point of view that you had. And so that's that's the whole idea. Yeah, the, I, I love the feeling of, of that sunshine hitting that iceberg and, and the feeling that it's, you know, got a little bit of transparency to it. Um, and the the subtlety of those uh, uh, color changes. You know, there's little bits of pinks in here and that sort of thing, right? So you can emphasize those a little bit more if, you know, if that's something that uh, you really like. So, um, have fun. Uh, I'm sure you can find lots of um, iceberg photos if you haven't personally taken any yourself. And uh, you can find lots of those. There's a lot of um, copyright free um, sites online like Unsplash and Pixabay and, and that sort of thing. So um, try those out and uh, yeah, um, so anyway, so that, that's my that's my picture here today. I'm going to take off my tape. You know what? It looks better without tape, I always say. You see that nice fresh white paper instead of that dull tape, and it looks nice. And so there we go. All right, and let's zoom in a little. There we go. So I hope you enjoyed that one, and... Um, we will see you next Wednesday. Yes, I think I'm here next Wednesday. And um, have a great week, everybody. Uh, don't forget, you can subscribe or turn on your notifications, and then you won't forget. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Take care. Have a good week.